Right now I have these three playlists on the YouTube channel, one for building a 2D physics engine, one to make an online game out of it with WebSockets, and one for creating a generic web application with database connection, user authentication and chat functionality. And I thought it's time to combine all this knowledge into one project, so I turned the good old capsule soccer game into a full web app and I'm going to go through the process of how I did that. So this time it won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial because I'm using technologies I have previously talked about. I'm just trying to explain how I managed to make these work together inside of one app. So you can just sit back and relax while I'm talking. I even add some background music to increase the user experience as much as possible. Okay, so my idea for the first step was making the generic web app and the game both to work separately, then putting them together and see what happens. I started with the blank Mern stack app, downloaded the source code from my GitHub account and went to the Mongo Atlas to create a new database and to get the connection string for the .env file. As for the database, I was thinking of having two collections, the users that stores username, password and the statistics, and the games which stores the results of every game. Although in the final version I didn't use the games collection, so now it's just there, in the Mongo Atlas doing nothing. After defining the data scheme and the route endpoints in the backend, I went to the frontend. I was going to have two components for authentication, register and login, a welcome component for the landing page, one for the game itself and one for the user statistics. Later it became more complicated than just that, but it was a good start. At the end of this stage I could register, login and then I saw my name on the welcome page. The game and the stats components, they were already there but they were both blank. Plus I could also log out. Moving on to the game itself, it was still working the way it used to ages ago, so I was only planning to make minor changes on it, like small modifications on the game field, on the game physics, changing the background color to the players that scored the last point, and make every round go until someone scores three times. And I also added a countdown before every round using this combination of the set interval and the set timeout methods. Plus I added some changes in the data structure so that I could keep track of the username based on the socket ID and the player's room number based on the username which made the code look a little cleaner and easier to use. And there were two changes that I thought I can do at a later stage, putting a message sending feature below the canvas and asking the users after every game if they want to start a new one immediately. After the blank web app and the game were both ready, it was time to merge them. The biggest issue with that was that I had this huge block of code containing the game physics and the user input and I didn't know where to paste it inside of the game component. It took me a while to figure out that if I put it inside of the use effect hook, for which the second argument would be the rendering context, then the game will start working whenever the game component has been loaded. I don't know if there are any other ways to do that, but it worked and it was enough. I also had to put the physics engine to the server side, but I didn't have any serious issues with that. It was a big relief to see that the web app and the game are now working together and at that point I thought I'm almost finished. But looking back now, it seems that I had just finished the preparation part. That's why it's called now first step. Next I added a CSS file, because I thought I can start styling the components. Styling took a really long time but it was mainly googling the CSS keywords because styling is something I don't do very often. And I would say that from the user experience point of view, the app became much better than it was before. So it was basically worth it. My original idea for starting a new game was that if a user clicks on another user's play button, the game starts and after the game, they both go back to the main page, which I called Lobby. But after spending hours on styling, I was so much into user experience that I came up with the idea of including an extra component before the game starts, so that both players have to agree to start play in order to start a new game. I call that component game setup, and then one more component after the game, so that if they both want to play again, a new game starts immediately. That component is called game over. And this made everything much more complicated than I expected because of the many different possible use cases. Because now if you click on play next to someone's name and one of you chooses to go back, then both users will go back to the lobby. If one of them wants to play and is already waiting in the stadium, the other can still decide to cancel the game, so both users will go back to the lobby. 
If they both click on play, then the game begins, but even then if someone clicks on quit, then again both users go back to the lobby. And same goes for the game over part after the game finishes. Now, let's walk through how I ended up implementing the socket communication for this whole game circle. If I click on the play button next to a user's name, I emit an event called game request to the server and include my own name and the other user's name in the payload. When this event arrives to the server, it looks up the smallest available room number so that it will know where it has to send the game data. It puts my socket in that room and sends a game requested event to the other user, who hasn't been involved yet, so that's to notify them that someone wants to play with them. When it gets notified, its browser forwards it to the game setup component and the server puts the second user to the same room as the first one, for which it needs to send its room number to the server. So now they both reach the game state component, where they both can either confirm to start a game or choose to go back to the lobby. When this component renders, the first thing it does, it asks the server for the two players' name and the room number. That's what the request game info and provide game info events are for so that they can set them as state values and display them in the browser. There are two buttons in this component, go back or start game. They both emit the same event called game confirm and a boolean value with it. If that value is false, then the user who clicked on it goes back to the lobby immediately and the server will broadcast that false value in the room the users were going to play so that the other user will know that too and gets redirected to the lobby as well. And since it's the last user in the room at that point, it also emits a cleanup room event to the server, so that all the room data that has been created so far, like the list of the sockets, the list of the usernames, get deleted and the room will be ready for another game. But if both players start the game, the game component will render for them, and there they both start by emitting an event called component ready to the server without any data. When the server receives this event for the first time, it creates the first player and sets its ready property to true. For the second time, it creates the second player and sets the second player to ready. And once both players become ready, the server sets the game is on flag for that specific room to true and sends all the necessary information to the two users in the event called game setup. So when the users get the data, they can be sure that everything is ready. They create the client side copies of the players for the sake of visual display. They do the countdown and then the game begins. The way the game works is the users keep sending the commands from their keyboards to the server, which simulates the physics, broadcasts the clients and the balls positions to the clients and takes care of the game logic. And when the game logic says that it's game over, which in this game means that one of the users has reached three points, it sends the winning player's number to the users. That number has been zero before that, so when it turns to either 1 or 2, then both users get redirected to the game over component. The first thing they do there, on rendering the component, is requesting the final game result from the server in the request game result event, and the server sends them the usernames and their final points. And there are two buttons here as well, they trigger the same game confirm event, with the true or false value, as in the game setup and the game components. So from here the users can either go back to the lobby and clean up the room after themselves, or go to the game component to start a new game. And I also have a redirect to lobby event in each of the components, so that if the server notices that anyone entered the URL of these game components directly in the browser, without actually being in a room, it gets automatically redirected to the lobby. So this would be the overview of the game's WebSocket communication system. That's how I did it, I don't know if it's the best possible way, but it seems to be working for me. One important thing I had left to the end was saving the statistics into the database, the user's collection, and request it in the stats component, which was still as blank as in the beginning. So every user sends a put request to the profile endpoint after receiving the game's final result from the server and there they get identified by their JWT token and then they add the recent game data to their own document in the user collection. And similarly, when they click on the statistics, the component sends a get request once the stats component has been rendered and displays the incoming data on the browser. And that's all for the communication with the database. Finally, I deploy this app on Heroku. Deploying a web app can be a struggle for the first time, but after you manage to go through it once, it will become a really repetitive task. After all that, this is how the app currently looks like. I'm not saying it's the final version, but it's one that works well and looks fine. 
it has statistics, it has a really unnecessary chat block, and the real-time listing of the users you can start the game with. The link to the app is in the description, the link to the source code as well. Alright, thank you and goodbye.